Hey, you guys, welcome to this episode of The Rachel Cruz Show. So you've heard me talk a lot about debt on this show and all the problems that it can cause financially, right? That when you make your income, your paycheck hits your checking account and you have debt, then it goes right back out to car payments and credit cards and student loans and personal loans and, and it all leaves. And then what you have left is what you have left to deal with versus if you were debt free and you had no payments, you have a lot more money to work with. So financially, of course, it takes a toll. But today, I also want to talk about other ways that debt can affect you and ways that you can overcome them. So there is a serious link between our money and our mental health. So according to the American Psychological Association, 60% of Americans consider money to be a significant source of stress. And debt specifically plays a huge role in this. Debt is overwhelming and it makes you feel like you don't have control. Our Ramsey Solutions research team found that more than half of Americans with consumer debt worry about their finances every single day. And those with consumer debt are also twice as likely to say that they feel unsatisfied, worried, and stressed. My friend, Dr. John Zaloni, Ramsey personality, always talks about when you have debt, you don't feel safe, like your body doesn't feel safe. I think it's fascinating. He talks about it in his book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, that a person cannot psychologically be whole or well while owing someone else money. Because when you owe someone money, it's like handing them a pen to write your story and letting someone else write it for you. Because they're gonna write it on their terms with their deadlines and their consequences. And all of that, it makes you feel unsafe, whether it's subconscious or conscious, like, you're aware of it. And just like the amount of money that you owe builds up more, the more you use your credit card, the more stress builds as well. And if you're stressed about being able to afford a bill and you use your credit card to pay it, the problem doesn't go away. The problem just gets dragged longer and longer down the road. So next time that bill comes around and you still owe money for it, then again, people go deeper in debt to pay that last bill and it just keeps piling up and piling up. 13% of Americans say that they expect to be in debt for the rest of their lives. That makes me so sad. That feels hopeless to me. And no matter where you are with your money, I don't want you to feel hopeless. Yes, can you be stressed right now? Absolutely. Does it feel like, oh, it could never be ending? Sure. But this idea that no matter what, this is gonna be my story, I hate that because you actually can do something different, but you have to choose it. You really do, you have to choose it. And I know not everyone is in debt just to buy like the bigger and better things. That's one reason people go into debt, but also they can go into debt because they just have to keep up with their bills. And so if that's you, we're gonna talk about that in a second, but I just hate the cycle of going and going and going. But listen, the good news is, if you are feeling stressed and you're feeling out of control, you can take back control. You really can. So feeling in control of your money is one of the best ways to fight that stress and get back to a place mentally, emotionally, and financially where you have peace. So here are a couple of things that you can do to take control of your money. Number one, you have to stop going into debt. Like that's not even an option anymore. Like a black and white line needs to be drawn. You're saying, I'm not going into debt anymore. And what that does is it opens up a part of your brain and life for creativity. So if you are at a place that you're like, okay, I am not going into debt. I'm not going into debt. So what does that mean? That means I may have to make some more money right now to keep up with my bills. Maybe that means I have to cut things out of my life that I really hate to cut, but I'm gonna have to in order to make my bills. Like it gives you this picture of, okay, what if it's not an option at all? So that black and white line needs to be drawn. And again, if you're in a really hard place financially and you don't have any savings or anything like that, and it's like, okay, I'm just trying to keep up with my bills in front of me. Again, I would say, look at the way money flows. Money flows in and money flows out. So your income, getting more money in is probably gonna be an option. But the great thing is wages are up. You can ask for a raise. You can find a job that pays more. You can take on a side hustle. There are things and ways you can bring more money in. And it's not gonna be fun, but you're gonna sacrifice for a short period of time, again, to get ahead on your bills. And then look at your outgo, your expenses. And this is where the budget comes in. Doing a budget, a zero-based budget, where your income minus all of your expenses should equal zero. So every dollar coming in is assigned to a category. And when you do this, you're gonna look back 
the last month or two or three and see, okay, how much did I spend on food? How much did we spend on clothes? How much did we spend on rent or a mortgage payment? Uh, how much did we spend on our water bill, on our light bill, on things that we never thought we'd have to spend money on, but things are keep coming up. Like you list everything out. And in that, you're looking at facts on a sheet of paper and you get to go down and say, okay, we're cutting Hulu, we're cutting Netflix, we're cutting this subscription, this, we're gonna save you know, 75 bucks here, we're gonna do this and move this around. And you actually, it's like a big puzzle and you can start seeing, okay, here's actually how we can get in control. But the budget is powerful because it helps you with the expenses side of your money. Then your next goal after doing a budget is to save $1,000. So I'm saying look around your house, sell stuff, get rid of things. Again, extra money coming in, cutting expenses, anything you can do to save that thousand dollars. And then you're gonna start paying off debt after that. And that is where we do the debt snowball, where you list out all of your debts, smallest to largest, regardless of the interest rate, pay minimum payments on everything and pay off that smallest one first. After that's done, you're gonna save up three to six months of expenses in a fully funded emergency fund and continue working the baby steps. And this is a plan that works in good times and in bad times. And don't be afraid to ask for help. Lean on your community, talk to a financial advisor, go to counseling if you need to, because if you're stuck in this cycle of debt, again, it's overwhelming and it's stressful and you want out. So talk about it, find, you know, read books, listen to podcasts, do things that keep you motivated. Also, you can check out Financial Peace University. This is our nine lesson class and it is everything you need to know about money. If you feel overwhelmed, this will help you step by step. I'll leave a link in the description below. So listen, I know these times are difficult right now, especially with inflation. Things feel out of control, expensive. But listen, there is a plan. There is hope no matter where you are. You may have to make shifts in your life right now. Sacrifice things you don't want to sacrifice. But it is so worth it to do those sacrifices in the present to set yourself up for a better future. Because you can take control of your money and create a life you love. <laughs>